Hi, you welcome to another episode of Ask the Trichologist. My name is Atlola and I'm the certified trichologist at African Naturalistas Hair Clinic. I'm the founder of African Naturalistas, I'm a certified trichologist, I'm a cosmetic scientist, among so many other things. At African Naturalistas, basically what we do is we help you achieve all your goals of healthy hair using things like our hair clinic, our hair products, our regimen, our memberships, our master classes, our conferences, and so many other things. You can always click the link below in the description box to check our various products and services. But right now, it's time for Ask the Trichologist. As the Trichologist basically is one program where you get to ask the trichologist any question any question and we are going to answer yes as long as it's related to hair and scalp we are going to answer your questions so what i want you to do before we move on is click the subscribe button click the notification bell because when it comes to hair and scalp we are going to be doing it right here for you and then what do we do as, as a trichologist we basically just ask answer questions that you ask i don't treat topics out of my own volition i just basically answer your questions that's why it's called ask the trichologist hi atilala i'm just gonna go straight to the point because i have been reading a lot about hair care. i've been reading blogs i've been watching videos i've been consuming a lot of resources because i'm very interested in being a trichologist in future and i basically have one question for you because i'm quite confused about the difference between ccca and androgenic alopecia i see a lot of pictures being used interchangeably on different websites terming them as ccca and androgenic alopecia and at this point i'm just confused so what exactly is the difference between ccca and androgenic alopecia and how can i recognize it Ellen from Nairobi. Hi Ellen, how you doing? Thank you very much for your question. Um, yeah, I understand your, your, your dilemma, especially when it's something you're very interested CCCA, in. CCCA, which is central secretrical centrifugal alopecia, um, is, is a scarring form of alopecia. Why androgenic alopecia is not scarring? Those are like a ma major differences between them and when i talk about scarring alopecia i'm talking about the fact that the scar tissue is present in ccca and it's underneath the scalp you get so the scalp tissue forms it spreads but it's okay before I, so i don't jump ahead of myself both of them spread but it spreads and it's like it spreads it keeps spreading in a circular pattern it starts in the middle it keeps spreading in a circular pattern spreads spreads and spreads and spreads till it burns off the you know the hair entirely that's how um ccca happens while androgenic alopecia is not scarring there is no scar tissue underneath the scalp that spreads and spreads and spreads and then it's a hereditary is the hereditary form of alopecia but i understand that you're female and we are going to be talking about we're going to be concentrating females more in this video but it also happens in the middle but it doesn't happen in a circular pattern so i've given you two differences right now it doesn't happen in a circular pattern it either happens in a vertical pattern or a horizontal pattern so it doesn't go in a circular pattern and keep spreading and keep spreading and keep spreading like that it actually widens so it happens straight so it goes from just like a small and it keeps widening 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 or widening 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 so if it has widened a lot like both vertically and horizontally and nothing has been done it then tends to look like ccca sometimes because it has widened so much that it looks like it's a circular pattern but it does not happen that way you get um that's why if it's advanced form of androgenic alopecia and advanced form of ccca looking at the hair loss patterns they might resemble they might look alike because they have both widened you get but the way they started is actually different 
CCCA, CCCA starts in a circular pattern and then androgenic alopecia starts for the female pattern baldness, not the male one which starts from the front actually, but the female one which starts from the middle and just goes like that, like that, like that, like that, and then it widens and then it consumes, I mean the hair loss goes. And then the second difference which I've alluded to is that one is scarring, one is not scarring. And then one is accompanied with inflammations underneath the scalp, which is CC because once it's scarring, of course, it's the scalp, the scalp is inflamed. There's some inflammation. So when uh, you have dermatologists who are very, you know, very well versed, very good in, you know, reversing CCCA to an extent because many times you can't reverse it completely but to an extent they give you things that not only sort out you know the recovery of the hair but arrests the inflammation they arrest the inflammation they don't just talk, talk about the um, recovery of the hair loss but they arrest inflammation so that when the hair loss the hair is recovered the inflammations don't go and take off the hair again so they have to arrest both but unlike androgenic alopecia where there are no inflammations involved it's just basically hereditary form of hair loss where you have the converted testosterone which is the dihydrotestosterone causing hair loss in those areas of your scalp so it's actually a particular hormone which is called the dihydrotestosterone that causes the hair loss in those areas and whatever um treatments you are giving to sort out androgenic alopecia is giving to you to arrest or to block this dihydrotestosterone so you see things in the market like called dht blockers oh this product has a dht blocker this one has a dht blocker this tablet has a dht blocker that's where the word dht blocker comes from because it's trying to arrest the dihydrotestosterone and then reverse the hair loss but the thing there is that whatever treatment you are using for the androgenic alopecia you have to keep using it because remember that hormone is continually being released it might not be released as fast as it was released before you started the treatment but it's still being released and then you have to stay on the treatment so this also tells you that the treatment option you choose for androgenic alopecia is very important because you want to know whether it's a treatment that you want to you can stay on for a long time and that's what has caused people to go for more natural options when it comes to um androgenic alopecia i'll put our own treatment options for both ccca and androgenic alopecia in the description box below but androgenic alopecia of course is easier to reverse it than ccca you get because ccca i mean you're talking about inflammations you're talking about um you're talking about scalp inflammations you're talking about something that you don't even know the extent of its spread how far it has gone now the cost of android of ccc the causes are also different the ccc many people have linked it they, they used to call it black the black women alopecia before because they, it's more common in black women and they have found that that is most common in ladies who have used or used to use a lot of chemicals in the past like um dyes um, relaxers and those things seep you get and then they cause those inflammations underneath but by the time they begin to do their work of blocking out your hair follicles you it many times it's already too late because it has seeped, it has spread and it's just it's, they are like sleeper cells you know sleeper cells when you talk about terrorists that are sent to different countries or different parts of a particular um town and they are sleeping they're just 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 they're just waiting to get the signal to wake up and once they wake up and they wreck the havoc it's already late by then it's already too late by then they've done their suicide bombing and they've taken the old the old town down that's what they are in this case because they are there you know you're using those chemical products and they are there doing their thing and by the time they start doing their thing they're already dead they're already underneath and they're spreading and the inflammation is spreading and they are doing their thing and they're taking the 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 old hair down but a good sematologist can help you out a good trichologist can help you out at the early stage stages also you get so if you think you're suffering from ccca from androgenic alopecia you always have to see your trichologist or your dermatologist as soon as possible because by the time it has spread so bad it's always 
a bit late at that particular point in time. Another way is um, to, 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 to tell the difference, which is the fourth way, is to tell the difference between both of them is the, the, the follicles itself. Remember, one has blocked out the follicles totally and you can't even see like some sometimes like smooth skin very smooth and very the follicles are basically gone they are not active unlike androgenic alopecia where the follicles degenerate they begin to reduce 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 but they are still there they never completely die out even though they are no more producing hair uh, so you, there's something called follicular degeneration syndrome that you see in androgenic alopecia they never completely die out totally which is why it's easier to reverse because once you take care of the dht um then the air begins to come out again because the follicles never completely died out even though there was no hair so yeah. a specialist will look at the state of the hair follicles also when before passing their diagnosis so those are four major differences between androgenic alopecia and the ccc the pattern in which the hair loss starts and spreads is one the state of the hair follicles is another the inflammatory state of the scalp is one and also the causes one is hereditary one is caused by um the use of um abuse of chemicals and more more prevalent in black women yes another one is that ccca is more prevalent in black women than other races um, so those are the, should I now say five, five major differences <laughs> between CCCA and androgenic alopecia. Any other thing then, I would like you to join the Good Hair Tribe to come and learn more if you are more very interested in hair care literacy, like the in-depth science, in-depth knowledge. I'll also put the link um, to join the Good Hair Tribe in the description box below. You can always join, come and learn about hair care literacy. And if you're not interested in learning about hair care literacy, you don't want to know, you just want to treat your CCC and treat your androgenic alopecia, I will also give you all the ways you can book your appointments at the hair clinic and um, you can also buy products, anything you want to do. Everything will be in the description box below. So I hope this episode has been useful to you. Share this video with a lot of women because I know people are interested. Oh, is it CCC? Is it androgenic alopecia? I'm confused. People are interested in learning this. Subscribe to our channel. Please, please, and please, I'm begging you, subscribe. Subscribe. You know, we have wholesome content when it comes to hair care literacy. Ask your questions by sending to att at africanaturalistas.com or ask in the comment section below. Also, I want you to click the notification bell and like this video. Please don't go without subscribing till I come your way again in the next episode of Ask the Trichologist. Bye.